Good evening everybody, welcome back, this is Chuck, aka Malik, and tonight we're going to talk about Tor, understanding it and using it. If you haven't used Tor, haven't heard of it, well first off you wouldn't be watching the video, so you've probably heard of it. Uh, Tor stands for the Onion Router. It is nothing more than uh, a free browser download for anonymous communication. What it does, it directs all internet traffic through a huge volunteer network, about 7,000 different nodes that helps you conceal your identity. Okay. And I have a, a slide that shows you how that works. Um, it's mostly used, of course, for, for visiting websites, for doing posts, you know, for, for visiting chat rooms, um, leaving comments and all that stuff while staying completely anonymous. Your source IP address is very well protected, far more protected than that of a virtual private network, uh, far more. Uh, a virtual private network, um, if someone's in the middle of it, and they know what they're doing, have about an 80% chance of finding out who you are. Using the Tor network, it is said that uh, that percentage is far less than 0.2% of them finding out who you are. And I'll get into that just a little bit more after I explain how Tor works. Well, this is how it works. And again, the reason why we do this is to stay anonymous. So, let's say this is your machine, and you want to go to this dark web website. So you launch Tor to stay anonymous. Well, all of these machines in the middle, and again, there's roughly 7,000 of them, are randomly picked to move your traffic from your machine to the machine that you need to get to. So like with every traffic, uh, every communication, we have a packet. That packet is your payload, of course, you know, the data, and a header and a footer. Well, the header and the footer, of course, have your source IP address, your IP address, and the destination IP address. Well, the beginning of this works very similar to anything else, much like a VPN. That packet is encrypted. But Tor doesn't stop there. Tor adds on more. So it's going to add on another header and footer and it's going to encrypt that. It is then going to add on another header and footer and it's going to encrypt that. And that is done before the packet ever leaves your machine. Now you go to transmit the packet. It's going to randomly pick an entry node. In this case, you know, we have it picking, you know, that one down there, that third one. Okay, so it picks that one. The only thing that that node does, it removes a level of encryption. Okay, so now it can read the header and the footer, which is then going to transfer it to yet another random node. That node also removes a layer of encryption, thus the name the onion routing. Every node removes, strips off a layer. It removes the header and footer and forwards it to another node, in which case the last layer of encryption is removed. At no time do these nodes know the, the uh, source IP address? It stays encrypted inside that inner packet, except for the last node, which we deem the exit node. Okay, now the exit node can't even really get to the source IP because it's still being forged, but it does know the destination IP, in which case 
it's decrypted and will send it to whatever site you told it to go to. So during all the routing through those three nodes, the data is highly encrypted. Now, I will kind of throw this out there real quick before we get into installing Tor and using it. Intelligence, the intelligence agencies did claim in 2013 that about 80% of the Tor users would be de-anonymized. It has yet to happen. In fact, let's go ahead and put this to real life. September 2016, we all know that Hillary Clinton's email servers were broken into. That was done over Tor. They cannot and have not figured out how to backtrack it to the source IP. Tor was used uh, to jump through three routers, to jump through three nodes, and send some malware. The odds of detection are said to be extremely low. Now, let's put this, let's play statistics here. Remember, there are 7,000 of these nodes. Let's say worst case scenario, someone runs two, what we'll call them poison nodes. Let's say they run an entry node, this one, the first one, they run a poison one, and they run a poison exit node. Remember, there are 7,000 nodes. About 2,000 of those are entry nodes and about 1,000 are exit nodes. The odds of you hitting that poisoned, that one poisoned entry node and the one poisoned exit node by the same person is about one in two million. So, your chances of being detected is incredibly low. And these nodes are constantly checked for poison anyway. So, you would have to be having a streak of really, really bad luck to hit an entry node and an exit node that are poisoned by the same person. And it's got to be by the same person. If it's by two separate people, it's not going to count because neither one of them is going to have enough data. It's got to be both of them. So again, the chances are one in two million that they'll ever be able to find your source IP. And that's still after a whole lot of work. So that's how Tor works. It's strictly to use to stay anonymous. Is it used by hackers? Yes. Is it, is it used by people to, to buy illegal guns, illegal drugs? Yes. Is that all it's used for? Definitely not. A lot of you know, regular, normal people use Tor to browse the web just to stay anonymous. So, let's take a look at, at where to get Tor from and then I'll open it up for you and it's up to you to do your own browsing. So, let me get this out of the way and uh, have I saved that? Actually, I'm just going to minimize it. I don't know if I saved it or not. I'm just going to open up Firefox and I'm going to show you where to download it from. And once we download it, which I already have it downloaded, so I'm just going to show you the site. It's just called torproject.org. And we give that a minute. And there we go. And what you're going to want to do, is you're going to want to go down here and click on this one. This installs the Tor browser. Now, I'm going to do a video later on how to install Tails, which is a, even a step higher uh, on a USB stick. But you'll go to the Tor browser, you'll scroll down, and you'll just download the Windows version, the Mac version, or the Linux version. 32-bit or the 64-bit. For Windows, it's the same version. For Mac, it's strictly 64. For Linux, you have your choice. So when you download it, what you're going to get is this little icon here. That's your setup. It's a simple install. Once it's installed, you're going to get this icon. It's just going to say start the Tor browser. Well, 
you double click it and you give it a minute. Now remember we're dealing with three layers of encryption here the Tor browser is not going to be fast. It's not as fast as Chrome, as Firefox, or IE. We're dealing with three layers of encryption here that it's got to set up and tear down. So do not expect going to pages to be incredibly fast. Also, do not expect any pages on the dark web to be nice and pretty. They actually look like websites built in the 1980s. There we go. So now Tor is up. It's going to welcome you to the browser and it tells you you're now free to browse the internet anonymously. I'm just going to get you started. But definitely, definitely do this. And do it every single time you launch Tor to make sure nothing changes. The first site you want to go to is ipmonkey.com. I know, strange site, but that's what they call it. IPMonkey. Now, yes, it is an orangutan. It actually even tells you that at the bottom. Disclaimer, yes, monkey is actually an orangutan. You should have an IP address that is not yours. And the remote port, if I refresh the page, you'll see one, the other, maybe even both change. In that case, my IP stayed the same, but my re remote port changed. I basically just hit a different node. Okay, so that's good. That's not my IP address. But don't stop there. Go to one more site. DNSLeakTest.com What you want to see, it's going to bring up an IP address that should not be yours and a location that is not where you're at. That's what you want to see. Now you're free to browse anonymously. If this comes back and states exactly where you're at, then your your IP service provider is using what we call a transparent DNS. No matter what you do, you hit their DNS servers first, which is going to nail where you're at. Now it gets a little tricky to get around that because you're going to have to set up proxy servers. The two big companies I know that used to do that were fined for it, and I know one of them don't do it. Any, it, it they don't do it anymore. The other one I'm not so sure about, uh, but one of them is very large where I live at. It, they got fined for doing it, so they don't do it anymore. The other one, though, again, I haven't tested them. They're not around here, so uh, so go here and and make sure it does not have your location. Now, why does it think I'm from Germany? If you hit this little drop down where the onion is at, you can see it shows this browser and it's going to say Germany. Now it thinks I'm from Germany, but before it goes to the internet, it's going to go Germany, France, and then Romania. So when I put in a website, when I get to that website, the website is actually going to think I'm in Romania. My machine thinks I'm in Germany in the middle of the transmission it thinks I'm in France. So again remember all this is encrypted. Nobody knows anybody else. So when I hit the website it's going to think this is the IP address I'm actually coming from which is somewhere in Romania and they're totally wrong. I'm nowhere near Romania. Okay. Now to get you started <clears throat> and then you can take it off on your own. One of the browsers that's used uh, for the dark web is DuckDuckGo. And this is actually just DuckDuckGo.com. Most people use that because it's, it's very similar to a couple of other browsers uh, or search engines. They don't, they don't track cookies. Um, so it's used a lot. So is Torch. But it will even tell you, we don't store your personal information, we don't follow you around, and we don't track you. Okay. Now, from here, and I use DuckDuckGo to find this page because it changes sometimes. Look for a page called the Hidden Wiki. 
but don't just stop there. It's the hidden wiki and dot onion. All dark websites end with dot onion. So I'm going to look through here and here's the site here. And look at that link. I'm going to go ahead to the page. But this is the type of website that you're going to see when you're on the dark web. It's not going to be called the hidden wiki dot onion. You're not going to be able to memorize these things. This particular page is zqktlwl4fecvo6rl.onion. And yes, it will change on you. Bookmarking pages from the dark web can be rather pointless. If you find a page that you really like, go ahead and stick it in a text file or something, but don't expect it to work forever. It may work for a month, it may work for two months, it may work for six months, but eventually it's going to change. So here it is, the new hidden wiki URL 2016. Now it tells you to go ahead and add it to your bookmarks and spread it around, and go ahead and do it, but again, don't expect it to always be there. If you try the bookmark and it says, you know, can't find the page, browse for it again, because it's changed. I'll show you this page because this gives you a, a whole bunch of places to jump from. You can take a look at um, some other search engines, Not Evil, Torch, of course DuckDuckGo. And again, DuckDuckGo, it says it's a hidden service that searches as the clear net. It will search both. Um, Torch is a fairly decent one. No Evil is, is all dark web stuff. There's financial things, Bitcoin wallets, credit cards, commercial services, you know, getting passports, driver's license, domain services, websites, web services, a whole bunch of blogs. You can stay on these forever. Usually one, one wiki page or one blog will send you to another one that will send you to another one, that will send you to another one. Messaging services. You, know, you can spend a lot of time inside of here too. A lot of boards. Anonymous bulletin boards. Flashlight forums. These are the places you go when you want to find more dark websites. You hang on these for a while. People will post sites constantly. And you can go to those sites too. Okay. A link to WikiLeaks, but this isn't the WikiLeaks.org that you may be used to if you've been there before, because that's on the that's on the regular web. Uh, this is where you upload stuff to WikiLeaks and stay anonymous. And then some you know political stuff, parasites. And this isn't all just political stuff either. You know, Parasite's a, a huge page. This is actually just a redirect to it. Um, where you can take a look at, and again, not the prettiest pages in the world, uh, but where you can take a look at, uh, let me scroll all the way down just to show you some things you can get. There we go. Uh, you know, wares, piracy, Nazism, racism, bombs, hacking. I hadn't been into hacking and freaking in a long time. Uh, an easy win hack. You'll you'll find things on here like uh, how to get free drinks out of drink machines, um, uh, how to get snacks out of snack machines. Um, I mean, you name it, they're pretty much inside of here somewhere. And yes, a whole lot of other things too, like how to make pipe bombs and junk like that. So, a whole lot of pretty interesting reads you can get in here. And some pretty funny stuff, too, if you go to some of the conspiracy uh, sites. Hmm. Self-destruction stuff. Yeah. So, go through, follow around, find some interesting stuff. Um, be careful downloading things. There's a whole lot of stuff on lockpicking. Uh, you know, be careful when you download stuff open things up all day long, but when you download them, you never know if there's going to be a virus attached to them. 
a, a ton of hackers stick on the dark web and, and love to do really weird stuff. So, yeah, you can get some, you know, some viruses from here, and they're going to be pretty nasty ones. Um, so definitely browse it, have fun with it, follow links, but just be careful when you go to download stuff. Unlike the regular web, the dark web is is pretty straight and to the point. It's going to tell you where you're going. Stay away from sites that have things like KP or CP, because that's kitty porn or child porn. Um, you don't really want to get into that. Um, there's some very bad sites here. There's some cool sites on here, but there's some very bad sites too. Uh, so just kind of stay away from those. Huh. Hey, you want to know how to cheat at your school tests? Well, there you go. Somebody's written a whole paper on it. And of course, some of this stuff is just junk, but anyway, they're pretty interesting reads. So have fun searching around. Uh, I will be posting some uh, some videos on particular sites on there that are kind of fun to go to and fun to, uh, fun to read. Um, so be on the lookout for those. Uh, but until then, hey, if you, uh, if you enjoy the channel, please subscribe to it. Give the videos a thumbs up if you, if you like the videos. And, and let me know if there's any particular thing you want to see. I'll be more than happy to, uh, to create a video for it and post it for you. Again, I'm going to be creating one shortly on how to uh, create a Tails USB. So where you can search the web and then forensically wipe your memory when you're done um, as, you know, as well as a couple other things I kind of got up my sleeve or I'm thinking about so you can see the little button pop up in the corner uh, on the left hand side that's for subscribing to the channel and somewhere on the right hand side you're gonna see a, another one of my videos it's kind of a random little post but another one of my videos there um, so subscribe like the videos and let me know what you want until then have a good night.